Hello everyone, I hope and I pray that you're well. Uh, I am well, as is my family. It's good to be here back in church, uh, back off of our, uh, off my self-isolation. I just want to pay attention uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, we're going to be back in Mark's Gospel, uh, Mark chapter 11, the Bible's open to that. And um, it's Mark's account of the clearing of the temple. And I just wanted to show you this. Uh, this is a card I once received. Jesus clears the temple. Hopefully you can pick that up. Sorry about the bad humor. I try not to apologize for the bad humor. But, uh, you know, I, I, that picture was in my mind. I can't get it out of my mind. Uh, Jesus clearing the temple. And I, I want to think about something from John's gospel that actually is going to end up on the cutting room floor, so to speak, from the, from the sermon. And, and it's because in John's gospel... Um, the story of the cleansing of the temple comes a lot earlier than, uh, uh, than in Mark. It comes a lot earlier in Jesus' ministry. And in John's Gospel, there's this uh, incredible declaration by Jesus. And uh, uh, Jesus in John 2 verse 19 says, Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. Um, and it's so important to reflect on this, I think, during Lent. Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. And from our perspective, we, we understand what this means. We, we get it. Uh, we, we know what Jesus is talking about. But remember, from the perspective of his first recipients and the disciples, they, they don't get it. And I think Jesus wants us to be certainly shocked and stunned uh, by the state of the temple. Right? The state of institutional religion, uh, the need for, for something much more. Um, and so John wants us to see that the Father doesn't um, care for kind of this commercialized religion. Doesn't, doesn't care for supermarket Christianity that, that commodifies our relationship with God. Um, you know, shopping for churches. Um, you know, for the right mix of worship styles, for, for this kind of tasty religious treat that's all style and not substance, right? Instead, what the Father cares for uh, is, is real passion for his revealed glory in Jesus Christ. And so the Father cares for, for real passion that actually leads to action. And so in John's Gospel, Jesus comes not only to reform the temple, but actually to replace it. Jesus comes not only to, to reform religion, but to replace religion with his very self. Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. And Jesus makes his point that his body is simultaneously the temple and the sacrifice. And I really think this is something to reflect on during Lent, that, that Jesus' body is now the church, right? Not this building, right? Not the temple, you know, but, but the, the members of the body are the people of the church, Jesus' body. And, and we are therefore simultaneously called to be the temple, right? The place where God resides and, and lives. But we're also called to be the sacrifice, the way that God makes himself known to the world. Unless the, the central place of worship, unless the temple, the church, the body, un unless it points directly at Jesus as the Passover lamb, right? Announcing, behold, uh, the, the lamb of God, the one who takes away the sin of the world, right? Unless we point to Jesus, um, all is lost. But when we do point to Jesus, and when Jesus is present in the body, in the church, in us, um, as God is so uh, clearly was present in the earthly temple, uh, then we will be one with God, and we will um, more and more, I think, uh, we will think and feel and act rightly at one with God. Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. Reflect on that. The peace of Christ be with you.